Uh, what is there in the budget for small businesses? So with budget 2024, we are going to continue investing in our young entrepreneurs through our Futurepreneur program. That's $60 million. This is a top up to the funds we've already provided. The persons with disabilities, uh, you're a minister of yes. uh, uh, diversity, inclusion, and the persons with disabilities. So those people, they are looking towards you that they, they need more from the government. So what you have uh, for them so that the disabled people, they can get more benefits from the government. Absolutely, yeah. and I think it's so important and I'm so proud of the fact that for the first time in Canadian history, we have a Canada disability benefit, statutory benefit that exists. And in this budget, we have put forward $6.1 billion. ਸਾਡੀਆਂ ਗੱਡੀਆਂ ਬਾਹਰ ਜਾ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਕੰਟੇਨਰਸ ਚ ਸਕੈਨਰਸ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈਗੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਆਰਮ ਸੈਮਿਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਔਰ ਡਰਗਸ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਚ ਆ ਰਹੇ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਅਸੀਂ ਬਾਰਡਰਸ ਨੂੰ ਸੇਫ ਕਰਨ ਲਈ ਫੈਡਰਲ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਕੀ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੀ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਡਰਗਸ ਔਰ ਗਨਸ ਨਾ ਆਨ ਵੈਰੀ ਅਰਲੀ ਇਨ ਆਰ ਫਰਸਟ ਬਜਟ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਆਰ ਸੀ ਐਮ ਪੀ ਐਂਡ ਸੀ ਬੀ ਐਸ ਨੂੰ ਇਨਕਰੀਸਡ ਆ ਫਰਗੈਟ ਐਗਜ਼ੈਕਟਲੀ ਹਾਊ ਮੈਨੀ ਹੰਡਰਡਸ ਆਫ ਮਿਲੀਅਨ ਡਾਲਰ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਇਨਕਰੀਸ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਵਨ ਆਫ ਦ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਰਿਸੋਰਸਸ ਸੀਗੇ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਘਟ ਹੋਏ ਸੀਗੇ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਵਨ ਏਰੀਆ ਦੈਟ ਵੀ ਐਜ਼ ਅ ਫੈਡਰਲ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਹੈਵ ਰਿਸਪੌਂਸਿਬਿਲਟੀ ਆਨ ਕੈਨੇਡੀਅਨਸ ਕਿਉਂ ਸੇਫ ਫੀਲ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਅੱਜ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਵੀਡੀਓਜ਼ ਦੇਖੇ ਹੋਣੇ ਆ ਕਿ ਆਮ ਰੋਬਰੀਸ ਘਰਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੜ ਕੇ uh they had all the the guns and ammunition with them car 14 minutes har chori ho rahi hai ede upar federal government da ki rukh hai ਫੈਡਰਲ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਨੇ 2024 ਦਾ ਬਜਟ ਪੇਸ਼ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਉਹਦੇ ਚ ਫੇਅਰਨੈਸ ਫਾਰ ਐਵਰੀ ਜਨਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਸੋ ਬਜਟ ਦੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਨੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਸਕੂਲ ਫੂਡ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਉਹਦੀ ਅਨਾਉਂਸਮੈਂਟ ਕੀਤੀ ਗਈ ਹੈ ਅੱਜ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਸੱਜਣ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਖੇਰਾ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਵੈਲਡੇਸ ਔਰ ਐਮਪੀ ਮਿਸਿਸਾਗਾ ਮਾਲਟਨ ਤੋਂ ਐਮਪੀ ਗਹੀਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕਿ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਨੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਸਕੂਲ ਫੂਡ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਐਂਡ ਅਰਲੀ ਚਾਈਲਡਹੂਡ ਆ ਜੋ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਹੈ ਨੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਸਕੂਲ ਫੂਡ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਇਹਦੇ ਉੱਪਰ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਕਿ 1 ਬਿਲੀਅਨ ਦੀ ਇਨਵੈਸਟਮੈਂਟ ਓਵਰ ਨੈਕਸਟ 5 ਇਅਰਸ ਜੋ ਫੈਡਰਲ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਕਰਨ ਜਾ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਨੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਸਕੂਲ ਫੂਡ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਇਹਦੇ ਉੱਪਰ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਨਾਲ ਆਰ ਨਿਊ ਨੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਸਕੂਲ ਫੂਡ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਵਿਲ ਪ੍ਰੋਵਾਈਡ ਹੈਲਥੀ ਮੀਲਸ ਟੂ 400,000 ਮੋਰ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟਸ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ ਦਾ ਪੋਪੂਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਇਨ ਦਿਸ ਸਕੂਲ ਇਜ਼ ਅਬਾਊਟ 475 students so picture 400,000 kids across this country who will be fed this is incredible news the need for this 1 billion dollar investment has never been more clear we know that food prices continue to increase some canadians are struggling to put food at the table for their families and across canada everyone uh, every every one in 3 people rely on food banks This shouldn't happen and our budget is going to change that so that no child has to go to school hungry. We also need to make sure our children are taken care of not just during school but after class too. As a parent uh, full-time working, I know both my kids needed the afternoon school programs and that's why our budget is also proposing investments to support after school learning to help our young students reach their full potential. Inflation is very high and seniors they are struggling with their pensions uh, because they cannot co- uh, keep up with their high inflation cost high food costs and we have a carbon tax over that so is government any plan uh, to compensate the seniors so that they can cope with high inflation because pension is not enough so that they can have their earnings we we see that on all the social media that's that's an issue with seniors Previous Minister of Seniors, um, I am uh, very happy to talk about the government's work that has been, that we have been doing since 2015 to support seniors. You know, as you, as some of you may know, in 2015, when we first got elected, one of the very first things that we did uh, was to ensure that we bring back the age of retirement to 65 from 67 which the previous government wanted to raise to 67 we knew you know when seniors are working incredibly hard it was really important to make sure that we support them uh, where they are um, one of the other things that we did was we actually increased the guaranteed income supplement that has actually helped uh, 45000 seniors in this country lift them out of poverty at the same time just uh, last uh, last year we permanently increased uh, the old age security 
Security Pension by 10% for those seniors that are 75 plus because we know seniors are living longer, which is a good thing in this country, but we need to make sure that they're supported. So for an average senior, that was $800 extra. And one of the things I want to talk about is, is that all the benefits that the federal government has put forward to support seniors, you talk about the old age security, you talk about the guaranteed income supplement, uh, the CPP enhancements that we have been able to do, all these are actually indexed to inflation. Uh, particularly, I want to talk about, you know, so and, and these and if these benefits actually continue to stay up even when inflation comes down, which, as you know, for the last three months, inflation has been close to 3.9, 3.8%, which is good. Uh, if you look at our economy, we have a AAA credit rate rating as we speak right now. And one of the things that we're doing in this budget is one of the things I will tell you that I heard from seniors when I was a minister of seniors was on dental, uh, for their dental health. It's so incredibly important that seniors, you know, one in four Canadians do not have access to a dentist. We need to make sure that they're getting that support. Uh, the millions of nine million uninsured Canadians will be able to get dental care that they need. Just in the two weeks that the portal opened, more than 50,000 seniors for the first time went to the dentist for the first time and they were not able to pay, they didn't have to pay anything out of their pocket. So as a government, uh, you know, while we see certainly, uh, you know, uh, conservative politicians, which we have seen, you know, they're now saying that they may actually raise their age of retirement again. Uh, as a government, we are going to make sure that we're supporting seniors because we know seniors have built this country. Uh, they have supported us to make sure our generations can succeed. And we're going to do as a government everything that we can to make sure our seniors are supported. Uh, you asked the question also about carbon pricing. One of the key things is the, uh, you have to be mindful. If you look at uh, how climate change is having an impact on, on our country, uh, I've been dealing with uh, disasters uh, for a very long time. And because disasters were significantly increasing across the country, because of climate change, the Prime Minister created his portfolio of uh, emergency preparedness, so you have one minister in charge who can coordinate uh, for emergencies. One thing I can tell you, the mayors or Indigenous leadership that I meet across the country, we want to actually look at preventing. How do we prevent this? Because if you look at the cost of dealing with disasters, it's into the billions every single year, which we, not only we will pay, our next future generations will pay. So the, uh, the price on pollution that we have also implemented is the best mechanism, and the economists have said this, when it comes to fighting climate change, it promotes the innovation that's needed within, within industry to do better, but more importantly, the way it's done, it actually also ha helps the economy grow. In British Columbia, where there was a conservative-leaning government at that time, brought this in, and our economy has also grown. Plus the fact they have eight out of 10 Canadians that actually get more back on this. Because, and this is a really important fact, that, that Pierre Polia wants to take that also benefit away. In addition to kind of saving money for seniors that we've done for dental care and other costs, this will be one other thing that will also be taken away. But more importantly, you'll take the best mechanism that's actually helping to fight climate change. And if we don't do this, the young kids that are also here, right? Their kids down the road will be looking at our generation and saying, what were those people thinking? We want to be a generation at our age now to saying that we took this on. We did not pass it on to the previous generations because it will cost us billions and it's going to get worse and worse if we don't take this action now. Uh, follow up for uh, Minister Sajid. Um, in the budget it was mentioned because the crime issue is very serious and across Canada and uh, uh, budget mentioned that we will get a scanners over the three to four years. Uh, we need scanners this year. Reason is we know every 14 minutes one car is stolen. And recent uh, crash on Highway 401 where we lost three lives, a three-year baby and grandparents, it's a tragic shock. And those suspects, they were out on bail and they had uh, orders uh, for last two orders from the court that they cannot be behind the wheels, still they were behind the wheels. Uh, what if they were behind the bar so we could have saved those three innocent lives? What government is doing to keep the criminals behind the bars, not on the roads, because that is a serious affecting every single individual in Canada. Yeah, and you raise a very good point when it comes to anybody who commits that crime needs to make sure that they uh, are appropriately uh, dealt with. And what we try, to, uh, what we do with the laws is continually assess uh, what type of laws are needed that'll actually have a deterrence effect. Now, if 
uh, and as a former police officer and working in gangs, uh, uh, working against organized crime, we dealt with a lot of, a lot of those things. Uh, some laws work, some laws need to need, need, need adjustment. One thing I can assure you, this is something that we take very uh, seriously. I mean, I've had the experience, you also have Minister Blair, who was a former uh, Toronto Chief of Police uh, here as well. We have the right expertise to be able to know that what is actually going to work. So when it comes to tragic events like this, uh, Hearts goes out to the families, but we're going to be learning. But here's one key thing. Yes, we'll look at the deterrence factor after somebody is arrested, and those are the things that we'll continue to do. In fact, actually, we've actually increased our investments into our police and intelligence agencies. I know this for a fact because I've worked with the, some of the police agencies that are actually getting the benefits of this. And I just spoke with uh, senior leadership of the Vancouver Police who are bringing some new innovative ways of dealing with some of the things that could be helpful here, even in the Peel region, to share some of that work. Uh, and our leadership will be uh, uh, from public safety will be meeting with them to see what is actually needed. But one important fact, what we don't talk about, and others, some other uh, conservative parties don't, uh, uh, does not talk about much, how do we prevent? What we want to do is how do we focus on making sure that the kids don't go into a, a place where they need to be arrested? Because if they're arrested, their lives have already been impacted. Now some of these, remember I talked about every child has a gift? I can give you countless examples where I knew gangsters that I arrested, right? Had amazing, they were amazing at school, but they, were, they weren't given the opportunity. Right? When, you, when, uh, when parents couldn't provide the opportunity because they were so busy working, right? because their mother had to also work because they couldn't have the childcare benefits. Parenting, providing those resources so that at the end of the day with a childcare benefit where you have $500 or even sometimes $800 saving per year is the difference between a child getting a bicycle or going on a small little vacation. Those little moments has a significant impact. So yes, we want to deal with the, uh, the aftermath of somebody being arrested, and that we will continually do, and which we aggressively have done. But one thing's for sure, what we want to focus on, and the difference between us and the Conservative Party will always be, that we will make sure that we focus on preventing the kids from even choosing that life, so they can find their self-worth and find that gift, and also be just, a, uh, just uh, uh, you know, great contributors to, to society. Thank you. I'll just add to that on auto thefts. Uh, look, as a member of parliament for Mississauga Malton, this riding contains Pearson Airport. It's a transport hub. We actually have some of the highest rates of auto theft here uh, and in Peel, so that's why I know this is an issue that's very important to the members that are behind me and, and, and to me. Uh, recently, we just held uh, an auto theft summit in Ottawa where we brought together manufacturers, local police jurisdictions, the CBSA, the RCMP, uh, and a whole lot of other actors and stakeholders in this space to come and speak about the issue of auto theft, which is obviously um, a problem uh, across Canada. And I sit on the Public Safety Committee, and we are studying this issue of auto theft as well, so I'm, I'm very familiar with the issue itself. If you look at Budget 2024, there are actually very actionable items inside Budget 2024, and one of those is in relation to bail. So we, we are changing the bail, bail rules when it comes to auto theft, when there is the involvement of organized crime, when there is the involvement of violence in the auto theft, and when there is a recruitment of young people uh, to engage in auto theft as well. So the bail rules are actually going to be changed to accommodate for all those things to add aggravating factors. Uh, so again, this is an issue that's very important to me. It's an issue that's very important to this government, uh, and we'll continue to work on it. Thank you. Federal Minister of Small Business, Richie Veldes is with us. Uh, what is there in the budget for small businesses? Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad to be able to share some of that news. Thank you so much. So with Budget 2024, we're going to continue investing in our young entrepreneurs through our Futurepreneur program. That's $60 million. This is a top up to the funds we've already provided. I was a small business entrepreneur myself, and I know how important it was for me to be able to uh, start the opportunity as being an entrepreneur. And you know what? Today, right here during our announcement, we met some amazing young people with some brilliant ideas. We're trying to encourage young people to see an uh, entrepreneur as a vi viable option. Secondly, through our budget 2024, we have the Canada Carbon Rebate, which you've seen. It's $2.5 billion that will be delivered back to approximately 600,000 small businesses across the country. So long as the small businesses have filed their taxes, their corporate taxes by July, uh, they will be able to receive that update. Also, uh, for any of the startups that are out there, we have the Venture Capital 
catalyst, catal uh, venture capital catalyst initiative. We're continuing to top up that, which is two hundred million dollars, which will really help you know um, entrepreneurs be able to help start up and scale up their business, which is very very important. It was very successful already, and I'm I'm excited to continue to invest there. And uh, Minister, normally Canadians uh, with high inflation cost, we have seen every small thing. If we if we do for grocery or uh, a small plant, we have to buy the prices are almost a double. Incomes has not increased that much. So every single Canadian is struggling with that high cost of living. So this budget, will this help the uh, like normal Canadian to co-op with high inflation cost, incomes not that high, yeah. small businesses are struggling. So how this budget will help the Canadians? And, and, coping up with the inflations? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Uh, first and foremost, I think it's important to highlight that uh, fortunately, inflation has come down from the high of 8.1 uh, in June, and now it's down to about 3.9%. So we've seen inflation come down, which is very beneficial. But as far as the rising costs, Budget 2024 is one to really help create, you've heard it today, creating a, a fairness for every generation. And then how we're tackling affordability is th things like our $10 a day childcare, which is going to save families um, $8,500 per child. That money will be back to families. They don't have to spend it uh, on, on expensive daycare, for example. We're going to be able to do all different uh, measures to help with affordability. Uh, you heard it today, but Ikwinder here had mentioned the uh, the importance of, oh, sorry, uh, Minister Kamalkara mentioned the importance of our um, Grocery Com Competition Act. This act is really there to help um, with the fact that there's not enough competition and that in, by introducing more competition, we'll have our grocery prices come down. But from affordability uh, measures like our dental child uh, dental care plan, ten dollar day child care, and our pharma care plan, it's really going to help reduce the cost for Canadians. Thank you, Minister Kara. Is an important announcement for uh, natural school uh, food program. What do you have to say on that? Uh, it's a wonderful announcement. It's so great to be here at the Morningstar Middle School, a middle school that I went to uh, almost 20 years ago, alongside uh, to, to have Minister Sajjan as well as Equinder here and Richie. Uh, as you know, Budget 2024, we put forward a budget to really ensure we're supporting Canadians, to make life fair for every uh, Canadian, particularly young Canadians. Um, that's why in this budget, we have put forward $1 billion that is going to support uh, a national food food program, which is a first of its kind that is going to support more than 400,000 children, some of the most vulnerable children that don't have access right now to uh, food. We know when we're feeding kids, uh, they're able to thrive uh, when they're, you know, hungry kids don't actually pay attention in school. So we, we need to make sure that they have the supports that they need. And, you know, as a government, we have always, always been there to support Canadians, particularly young families. You know, you don't remember, uh, you know, in 2015 and 2016, when we put forward the Canada Child Benefit, yes. that is actually giving more money back, you know, nine out of 10 families. Canadian families actually get more money back through Canada Child Benefit. You know, when we put forward $10 a day early learning and child care agreements right across this country, we're seeing in Ontario right now, an average family is saving $8,000 per year per child. And we have reached an agreement with eight provinces and territories that are already at $10 a day child care. And we know this is not just good for, you know, the kids and affordability that we're talking about. It's actually good for the economy. We know 85% of women in this country are now in the work workforce, which is incredible to see because when we have, when you add more people into the workforce, Canada, our economy is thriving. So very proud to proud of the work that we're doing. We know we have a lot more to do and we're gonna to continue to make sure we're delivering for Canadians. Okay, um, the persons with disabilities, uh, you're a minister of yes. uh, uh, diversity, inclusion and the persons with disabilities. So those people, they are looking towards you that they, they need more from the government. So what do you have uh, for them so that the disabled people, they can get more benefits from the government. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's so important. And I'm so proud of the fact that for the first time in Canadian history, we have a Canada disability benefit, statutory benefit that exists. And in this budget, we have put forward $6.1 billion. You know, if you look at the, all the budget, it's the single largest line item that exists in the budget that is going to ensure $2,400 per year uh, per individual uh, to make sure some of the most vulnerable individuals that exist, working age persons with disabilities, to make sure that we're supporting them. Uh, we know this, how incredibly important it is that we're doing this. Uh, we're doing this with alongside provinces and territories. 
But one of the most important things is, and we've seen this in the past, when the federal government puts money forward, the provinces and territories claw back the money. So we're now making sure that we work alongside provinces and territories and to ensure that they do not claw back any of the benefits that we put forward. We know there's more to do. Like all the progressive benefits that we put forward, we're going to make sure they're expanding. We're going to make sure that they're growing. But for the first time ever, there's a federal be benefit and the Canada Disability benefit, benefit that is going to support some of the most vulnerable Canadians across this country. Uh, final question. Affor affordability is a big issue for Canadians as of today because uh, they never struggle this, what they are doing because with the high mortgage rates, uh, with the high food prices. So uh, what is there in the budget so that we can support Canadians so that they can cope with this high inflation? Yeah, no, I, I think we all recognize that it's been a challenging time. You know, you think the aftermath of COVID-19, you know, where economies right across this country shut down. Uh, when you think of the supply chain disruptions that we've seen, if you look at the war in Ukraine and the Middle East and all across this country, it's not, Canada is not the only country that is, you know, immune to these challenges. I think we see across this country, uh, you know, Canada, across the world, actually, uh, that economy, economies are challenging. But one of the things that we have been so good at, because during COVID, we made a choice to invest in Canadians and families and support businesses. Canada is actually doing quite relatively well. If you think of for the last three months, inflation has actually come down and has stayed close to 39 to 3.8%. If you look at the, um, uh, the, the AAA credit rating that we have just received, you know, only G7 country that has received the AAA credit rating to make sure our economy is growing. If you look at our employment numbers that are actually growing, you know, more, uh, 1 million more Canadians are employed now than there were before the pandemic. We're actually in the right track. But at the same time, we know there are Canadians that are struggling. We know affordability is a real challenge that is why you know in this budget we have put in affordability measures such as you know i talked about the national school food program that is supporting Canadians wherever they are. That is why we have put money for the Canada Dental Care Program, which is actually supporting more than 9 million uninsured Canadians get dental care that they need for the first time. That is why we have put forward Farmer Care Program that is going to make sure that, you know, uh, particularly uninsured Canadians, particularly women, we can access to contraception. At the same time, our community knows this very well. Diabetes is, a, a, you know, we call Peel Region an epicenter for diabetes. Their diabetes medications are going to be free uh, for those, some of, for more than f 4 million Canadians that are un uninsured. So these are all affordability measures, the support through the Canada Disability Benefit to make sure we're supporting the early learning and childcare, the investments that we're making. These are things that are there to support Canadians. And I think as we can see, inflation is being steady. And as we're seeing across, uh, and what we've been hearing from the Bank of Canada that we're hoping to have uh, uh, you know, reduction in, uh, in, in, uh, in interest, interest rates. rates. Hopefully that will also help. But at the same time, we know, I think we've gone through some challenging times. I, I can see the optimism in the future. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sajjan, it's a great announcement for the food, National Food School Program. Thank you. So, what So, the uh, education program is actually, uh, it's also, personally, it's very important uh, to me. I want to tell you, uh, research shows that uh, brain development on proper nutrition it just makes sense and it's sad to see that up in the country they didn't get everything that they needed I remember as you know parents so anything cheap that's what you got and one, what, what we uh, want to do as a government is making sure that they have an equal opportunity they get to making sure that they have the opportunity to reach the full potential of the education because it's through them. Their future, they're going to be looking after us. They don't, we're going to get older. Uh, so that's what this is about, and making sure that uh, every generation has a, a fair chance of success. Uh, Minister, health, security, safety, and affordability. Safety, security, the Galkariate, to see Thoda background of the Chuha, son of the Sugi, Canadians, you safe feel Nikar Rajo, Kuki, as he to see videos, the Kihone, gay armed robberies, Karande, which Wadke, they had all the the guns and ammunitions with them, car, Chodamir, Churchuri, or yeah, and the upper federal government, the key look here, Kuki, the other province of Galkarde, Osara, which federal government they pande, K, Bail Karke, Unanu Chadayan, that the province can they see Sarakita, they send a clear car. Well, to be honest, this is it's not also a fair argument, Jerry Hagi. First of all, Jerry, when it comes to crime, it's and or issues, Jerry Hagia, 
is very different across the country. For example, here at the Ontario, the which auto travel theft uh, is a prevalent issue. But it's not the same across the country. But that doesn't mean it's not a big issue here. What are we basically going How do we learn from one another? I know that Jadon Sadi, long time ago, auto yes. theft was a very big issue for yes. us. Right? Well, then, Vancouver Police, now working with other uh, organizations, different programs down there to making sure that we combat that. I remember uh, even just before I got into policing, we called the bait car program. Yes. Right? And at the Bihagi Horn, I have confidence in the police to making sure that on uh, a resource they get that so they can do their job even better. Because ultimately, police to come to be independent, but only to deal with uh, the with crime. And so, has got getting extra funding with the Bihagi through federally to the provinces, up and support company. But ADNR is also the coordinating function. Horn Jira, even with the auto theft, we're bringing different agencies together to force them. To, to cooperate more, and I can tell you, Jadoni uh, after the did the auto theft uh, task force jado shuru kita sega, and that met in Ottawa. I can tell you that jado any itto baad porch the gay hena and gave CBA jadi you help work coordinate the work with CBSA. Kinnia kara and labia was in in the different sea containers. So this is about how leadership can have an impact. But when it comes to safety, jada hega. Jadi laws have get sure they're important, and I completely agree with it. Jadi, for example, do anybody do when they commit a crime, you need to make sure that jadi law have get suits the crime. Jadi kita have get, and also keep jadi open a dangerous offenders have get to keep them in jail. And by the way, uh, in fact, actually, even for quite some time, jadi anybody who used a gun, uh, guns, increase their penalties. But one of the most important things is is how do you get prevent it in the career? We got to make sure that it's how do you younger generation have get that we put even more effort. Up, uh, to making sure that they don't get choose a life of crime, and that is probably the most um, most important thing because ultimately, if you want to deal with this other threat, uh, we always look at oh my god, this is uh, something bad has happened. Yeah. Yes, we need to deal with that, but let's also let's make sure that penalties you prevent it. So imagine, for example, your parents say, yeah, I don't know how many times the menu kisse ka nu jana panda honda sega that to tell them their kid. Uh, has been arrested for doing something, and just my parents in Malta Haga, you know, very loving parents, but they're either either busy with with work, um, opportunity, apne niyan ni dey sakde. So we got to make sure that pura apne jodi problem hai pura isi dekhiye to making sure that apne jodi Canadians can can feel safe. So to see, man, they okay criminals no jail de pichhe hona chahiye na ki open on the road. Of course, no. But the thing is, but this is where jodi uh, laws hai gaya. For example, I I, I remember uh, yeah. very very clearly whether it's come to I. Arrested a lot of people who uh, uh, stole cars, guns, and stuff. And even the laws in place. Part of it, it was about the work you did. Right? Yes. So to keep people in con the condition. For example, I remember as a police officer asking for the right conditions uh, for it. And sometimes, uh, within the uh, within the rules of Parayirihage, why this person should stay in jail? And here's the interesting part. Sometimes it's about what kira tusi kina kidan lekhe hage to show a judge to keep it. Person in jail. So, jada to see a kam hai ga. Laws are important. How you enforce the laws to see kida apne judicial system na kam kariye to making sure all of this work. I remember one time, the um, police officer does the ga. The the judge made a decision. Like a criminal nu onu give uh, let let them free. And my senior police officer man kya se ga. He goes, are you sure? Uh, rather than the law, he goes, what did you do to making sure that he stayed in jail? Mm -hmm. Right. So I remembered it. It's not in the responsibility, Hagia, yeah? and I'm. Uh, I'm even as, as a former police officer. Anywhere I travel, my senior police officers, especially the leadership, no one will do that. Keep it. Okay, has things changed? Sanu key change gonna be now within the laws, and that's why we'll continually up and make some uh, make law stricter, uh, make changes. Get issues, Hagia, to making sure that we support the police with the right laws. So, just only enforce gonna Hagia, they have the right tools. Peel police chief Nish Duri Apanala si sawal kitta ki. ਇੱਥੇ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਚ ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਯੂਥ ਦੇ ਕੋਲ ਇੰਨਾ ਗਨਸ ਕਿੱਥੋਂ ਆ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਸੋ ਹੀ ਸੈਡ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਓਪਨ ਬਾਰਡਰਸ ਸਾਡੀਆਂ ਗੱਡੀਆਂ ਬਾਹਰ ਜਾ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਕੰਟੇਨਰਸ ਚ ਸਕੈਨਰਸ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈਗੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਆਰਮ ਸੈਮਿਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਔਰ ਡਰਗਸ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਚ ਆ ਰਹੇ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਅਸੀਂ ਬਾਰਡਰਸ ਨੂੰ ਸੇਫ ਕਰਨ ਲਈ ਫੈਡਰਲ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਕੀ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੀ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਡਰਗਸ ਔਰ ਗਨਸ ਨਾ ਆਨ ਸਾਡੀਆਂ ਗੱਡੀਆਂ ਬਾਹਰ ਨਾ ਜਾਣ ਬਟ ਹੀਅਰਸ ਦਾ ਥਿੰਗ ਦੋ ਓਕੇ ਫਰਸਟ ਆਫ ਆਲ ਇਜ਼ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਗਨਸ ਇਸ ਹੈਸ ਬੀਨ ਅ ਰੀਅਲੀ ਬਿਗ ਇਸ਼ੂ ਫਾਰ ਐਗਜ਼ਾਮਪਲ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਗਨਸ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਡਰਗਸ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਗਨ ਇਸ਼ੂ ਇਟਸ ਨਾਟ ਜਸਟ ਵਨ ਵੇ ਇਟਸ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਟਾਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਇਟਸ ਸੋ ਇਟਸ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਵਰਕਿੰਗ together i know that jede for example the guns issue mm -hmm. is more from the us uh, at, at the end yes. huh? but here's the thing though very early in our first budget is the apne jede rcmp and cbsu 
ਇਨਕਰੀਜ਼ਡ ਆ ਫਰਗੇਟ ਐਗਜ਼ੈਕਟਲੀ ਹਾਊ ਮਨੀ ਹੰਡਰਡਸ ਆਫ ਮਿਲੀਅਨ ਡਾਲਰ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਇਨਕਰੀਜ਼ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਵਨ ਆਫ ਦ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਰਿਸੋਰਸਸ ਸੀਗੇ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਕੱਟ ਹੋਏ ਸੀਗੇ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਵਨ ਏਰੀਆ ਦੈਟ ਵੀ ਐਜ਼ ਅ ਫੈਡਰਲ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਹੈਵ ਰਿਸਪੌਂਸਿਬਿਲਟੀ ਔਨ ਐਂਡ ਐਂਡ ਵੀ ਇਨਕਰੀਜ਼ਡ ਦੈਟ ਦੈਟ ਲੈਵਲ ਆਫ ਸਪੋਰਟ ਆਈ ਨੋ ਆਲਸੋ ਵਨ ਇਟ ਕਮਸ ਟੂ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਕ੍ਰਿਮੀਨਲ ਇੰਟੈਲੀਜੈਂਸ ਹੈਗੀ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਰਾਈਟ ਇੰਟੈਲੀਜੈਂਸ ਵੀ ਚਾਹੀਦੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਹੈਵ ਆਲ ਦ ਲਾਸ ਐਂਡ ਬੈਸਟ ਰਿਸੋਰਸਸ ਬਟ ਜੇ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈਗਾ ਕਿੱਥੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੇਖਣਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਕਿੱਥੇ ਪ੍ਰੀਵੈਂਟ ਕਰਨਾ ਕ੍ਰਿਮੀਨਲਸ ਆਲਵੇਸ ਕਮ ਥਰੂ ਸੋ ਵੀ ਆਲਸੋ ਆਪਣਾ ਮੇਕਿੰਗ ਸ਼ੋਰ ਦੈਟ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਇੰਟੈਲੀਜੈਂਸ ਹੈਗੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਜਾਦੇ ਰਿਸੋਰਸਸ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਕੈਨ ਟੈਲ ਯੂ ਦੈਟ ਇਟ ਹੈਸ ਹੈਸ ਐਨ ਇੰਪੈਕਟ ਬਟ ਐਸ ਕ੍ਰਿਮੀਨਲਸ ਜਦੋਂ ਵੀ ਗੈਟ ਮੋਰ ਸੋਫਿਸਟਿਕੇਟਡ ਫਰਮ ਫਰਮ ਅ ਪੁਲਿਸਿੰਗ ਪਰਸਪੈਕਟਿਵ criminals try to get more sophisticated so it's a constant thing so we have to learn and i hope i can tell you that apne obviously jo the mapping experience gal karda i being in from yes. british columbia i talk yeah. more from that one of the things that i would say is that they i'm i'm very impressed with some of the work that they did they got they had a really big gang issue mm-hmm. and so we sanu be we had to think differently and work differently to hit uh, to deal with that but i can tell you that right now jo the map peel region the senior senior leadership number really hai uh we t- he talked about what the vancouver police ki kar de hai so we're going to make that linkage and i i talked to a superintendent who is working with uh the police leadership here to share those lessons and also jedi and the lessons from here can also be uh, shared, shared. Yes. thank you mr sir